Today we are going to discuss about the development of larynx. As we know that larynx is a part of the respiratory system and respiratory system starts developing in the fourth week. Actually the respiratory system starts developing as a median outgrowth which is called the laryngotracheal groove that appears in the floor of the caudal end of the anterior foregut or primordial pharynx. At the end of the fourth week, this laryngotracheal groove invaginates to form a pouch-like outgrowth called the laryngotracheal diverticulum. The distal end of this laryngotracheal diverticulum contains a respiratory bud that is the primordium for the respiratory tree. This laryngotracheal diverticulum soon separates from the primordial pharynx, however it maintains a connection to it through a primordial laryngeal inlet. At the fifth week, the tracheoesophageal folds develop in this laryngotracheal diverticulum and at the end of the fifth week, they approach each other and fuse to form a tracheoesophageal septum. This tracheoesophageal septum divides the cranial portion of the foregut into a ventral part and a dorsal part. This ventral part is called the laryngotracheal tube and it is a primordium for the larynx, trachea bronchi and the lungs, whereas this dorsal part is a primordium for the oropharynx and esophagus. Let's focus solely on the development of the larynx. So larynx develop from the portions of the 4th and 6th pharyngeal arches as a laryngeal orifice which is a slit like opening formed between the 4th and 6th pharyngeal arches. How the different structures of larynx are formed? First of all the laryngeal epithelial linings are derived from the endoderm of the cranial end of laryngotracheal tube and different types of laryngeal cartilages are formed from the mesenchyme of the 4th and 6th pair of pharyngeal arches as well as the mesenchyme derived from the neural crust cells. Let's see how the arytenoid cartilages are formed. The mesenchyme at the cranial end of the laryngotracheal tube proliferates to form the arytenoid swellings. And these arytenoid swellings convert the slit-like aperture, the primordial glottis, into a T-shaped laryngeal inlet. And the epiglottis is formed from the caudal part of the hypopharyngeal eminence. The laryngeal muscles are derived from the myoblasts in the 4th and 6th pair of pharyngeal arches. And the nerve supply of the larynx is derived from the branches of the vagus nerve. How the laryngeal inlet is formed? The arytenoid swellings convert the slit-like aperture, the primordial glottis, into a T-shaped laryngeal inlet. The laryngeal inlet is then temporarily occluded by the proliferation of the laryngeal epithelium. The next week, the recanalization process occurs, and during this recanalization process, the laryngeal ventricles are formed. The recesses are bound by the folds of the mucous membrane that becomes the vestibular folds and the vocal folds. The point is that the larynx is formed in high position in the neck of neonates, allows the epiglottis to come in contact with the soft palate, and the structural descent occurs over two years of life.